Philip, very good to see you. Um, first off, Iran signalling a willingness to talk over its nuclear programme. It's been saying that for a while now. Is this desperation or is Tehran trying to buy more time? What's your thoughts about that? Well, I rather suspect that in this case it's Iran trying to buy more time. I don't, I don't, I think Iran understands that essentially it's a non-starter to make these kinds of proposals. The, uh, uh, the Western powers basically have uh, gone into the negotiations insofar as there are negotiations with a, uh, a, a preconception that Iran is engaged in a secret program to develop a nuclear weapon. And uh, with that, with that pre preconception, obviously Iran has nowhere to go. So I think it's, it's basically a question of buying time. The US and the EU advocating an embargo on Iranian oil, as just mentioned there, but they consume at the end of the day barely any of it themselves, just a small percentage. So which countries will feel the squeeze if the ban comes into force? Well, the, obviously Iran will feel the squeeze most strongly, assuming that it is possible to uh, enforce the uh, what is being proposed and, and that of course is by no means clear oil is a fungible com commodity and it can be sold anywhere uh, Iran needs the uh, exports of the oil to finance its government to finance uh, its social programs so Iran would be the big sufferer and that's the intention obviously to make Iran suffer so that Iran will will do something that uh, uh, is is more transparent in regards to its nuclear program and if Iran did carry out that threat and block off the vital Hormuz straight over the embargo it's surely they're gonna harm Europe even if it's not using a lot of its oil it is using a lot of oil that comes through that area that's the whole point from other Gulf states what's that going to do to oil prices well if, if Iran even makes an attempt to block the Straits of Hormuz oil prices will probably double or treble uh, the thing is that the real danger here is that it could produce a shooting war if the United States uh, does follow through on its resolve to keep the Straits open which won't be that easy and and I think that it it virtually guarantees that uh, Iranian naval forces and US naval forces would come into conflict there are lots of different opinions on how bad it would be if it did kick off. We've been hearing lots, lots of experts over the last month or so. What do you think would happen as we head into 2012 if this did uh, get out of hand? What, what's the worst case scenario? Well, the worst case scenario is World War III, I'm afraid. Uh, the problem is that Iran is, is surrounded by a, a number of countries that are, are essentially hostile to it, and some of them are nuclear armed. And, and uh, this is a perfect cauldron for, for starting something uh, with a very minor, relatively minor incident that escalates and escalates and escalates and winds up as a, as a major war. I started this interview by saying, you know, I was wondering whether Iran was buying time. You thought it was buying time. The crucial question is buying time for what? Well, you know, I think that in the world of politics, that things uh, tend to shift, and and certainly the resolve of the uh, Euro European powers to to push on this Iranian nuclear uh, issue uh, is higher now. But if there is a genuine threat uh, to possibly raise oil prices through closing the Straits of Hormuz, then the Europeans, who get uh, quite a lot of this oil, would begin to reconsider what they are doing. So I think Iran is basically saying that you know things can change. And, and while there's a, a high level of belligerency right now, if we buy time, possibly that will change. Um, I know you've been following this story really closely. What, what are your thoughts about the killing of that uh, Iranian scientist in Iran? Uh, it's uh, just the latest killing. Tehran is, of course, blaming Israel and the U.S. Do you think a covert war is being waged there behind the scenes? Oh, yes, absolutely. I think a, a covert war is being waged. Uh, by the United States and Israel. I think in this case, uh, the actual killers of the scientists were, were probably Iranians that were recruited by uh, Mossad or the CIA outside of Iran and then sent in to, to do the work. And uh, I believe that the uh, intelligence used to locate this man uh, and to target him probably came from the United States and, and probably it was intelligence that we shared with Israel. Philip Geraldi, thanks ever so much for being on the programme. Uh, joining us uh, live there from Washington DC, thank you.